Baptist Church will stand. Take your Sunday school song books, turn to song number 72. Song number 72. In your Sunday school song books, we'll sing, I'm in the Lord's Army. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Song 72. <clears throat> Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! All right, let's try that one more time, amen? Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. All right. We'll go ahead and pray this morning, amen. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for folks being here. And Lord, I pray that uh, uh, give folks safety as they travel here. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit show up, Lord, be in the service. We love you and ask all these things in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. All right, maybe seated. All right, song 68, and we'll sing the books of the New Testament. Amen. Song 68, here we go. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation, one more time. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not Roman Catholic. Amen. I already was in that mess and I got out. Amen. Amen. Jesus was able to get me out of that. What a mess that is. These religionists. That's what I call them. Religionists. And even these people, they go around thinking that they're the only ones. I was telling Brother, Brother Dave about the conversation I had with somebody who uh, wouldn't answer me the scriptures. Uh, tell me what the Bible said about what they believed and where they found all this. But it was found out later it was their revelation. Because they were revealed by God. That, that God uh, bypassed the word of God and changed it through this person. <laughs> I said, wow. So that means the problem with uh, these people and their revelation, you know what the problem is, right? How do you know they're right? Hmm. What's going to back them up that they're right in what they're saying? I mean, what is going to be the standard? 
You got to have a standard. There's got to be a foundation. How do you know if the wall is straight if you don't have a foundation that's straight? Right. When you build a house, you, you hope the foundation is square. <laughs> Seriously. I did a house one time, the foundation, no joke. This is not a joke. Now listen to me. It was six inches out of square. Brand new. You know what we told? The, guy, the co concrete guys are going to frame this house. And they did. And you could see it how out of square it was. It was a horrible house. I don't, I don't know why they just didn't tear out the concrete and do it all over again. But to frame and to do, get things straight, get things right, you couldn't do it. You saw on the windows that the, how out of square the foundation was just because of the windows. <laughs> see, that's what happens when someone's going to give a revelation. Where, what is keeping it square, straight? See? And uh, eventually it gets way out there. There's no plumb line. The word of God is the plumb line. That's right, amen. So, yeah, this is what I contended with this woman this morning. It was a woman, of course. <laughs> uh, you know what? I get, and I'm not mad at women, and I don't hate women, right. but women have their place just like men do. A man doesn't go give a revelation either. Nope. Huh? And, uh, and, uh, but here's a problem I have when a woman decides to usurp the authority over her husband or men, she gets way out there. She really does. God has nothing. He takes his hand off of her. He lets her do whatever she wants to do. And then the fools will follow her. The blind will, will, will follow the blind. Amen. Amen. And, uh, so she got all mad at me <laughs> because she said, pride cometh. And I was telling brother Dave this pride cometh. I said, finish that verse. She couldn't finish it because that's all she knew of it. Pride cometh. <laughs> of course, she probably would have said pride cometh before a fall, and that's not Bible either. Pride cometh before destruction. So I don't know how many Christians say pride cometh before a fall. That's not Bible. Pride cometh before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. Get it right. Yeah. So she got all mad at me, and she started calling me names, and she used a little rhyme to call me disgusting. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord, man. First thing in the morning on a Sunday. What a blessing. <laughs> All right. Hey, no, really, I enjoy that because I enjoy uh, putting her to the challenge. You say, why? Because the people need to be challenged that are like that. And they need to be challenged, need to be set in place because you, the Bible sets them in place. I just kept using Bible and scripture and, you know, and telling her, no, that's not what the Bible says. I mean, you know what she, you know, okay, listen to the deception. She said, um, she said, be, you know, where the Bible says, be not, be not, uh, um, oh, it's in John, John chapter 14. It talks about, it, it doesn't say be not deceived. It says be not, someone give me the word. I had it for her. No, 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 it says be, be no, be, be not, be not worried, be not. Be not troubled. Be, it tells you, be not troubled. She says to me, be not deceived. And I said, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, be not troubled. She goes, well, I changed it for your case. I said, so you have the right to change the word of God? <laughs> I said, Revelation 22. You know? And I said, and then you're going to face judgment from God. And she goes, that's your judgment. I said, no, it's Bible judgment. <laughs> This is the kind of thing you get to deal with, man. I mean, talk, and then she said, I was a baby. I was a newborn babe in the womb still. <laughs> 36 years in the womb. <laughs> so praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, I, that's about how I was treated. I was like, just like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> didn't make me mad. Didn't give me no flesh. I did a really. So, uh, oh, amen. I should have got out a, pa a spiritual pacifier or something. Amen. <laughs> well, we're going to dismiss the chillings. Who do we got? Miss Faith. Amen. Then who do we have? Half Miss Faith class. We got Miss Doris's class. Miss Doris drives, uh, drives that uh, yeah. sheriff's car now. She pulled, she has a yellow you know, glow in the dark stickers on the back. I, I pulled in, I go, what's the sheriff doing here? Then I realized it was her car with her scripture straight stickers on the back. But it's a bright orange yellow on a black car or a dark brown car. 
And I, and that's the first thing I thought, because we see them out at our place all the time out that way, the sheriff. So they think they're sneaky too. They're hiding. <laughs> they're sneaky. <laughs> they hide. They'll actually hide in the bushes. They'll pull their car right into the bushes. And, but then those yellow reflectors show up when your car lights hit them. All right, now who's our poster child today? We have picked someone. And who? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Can I write the first thing in here? You guys just follow suit. <laughs> you got a pen? Uh, I got a pen right here. We don't want to use your ink. <laughs> want to be a blessing to you. You save your ink. <laughs> Amen. All righty. Was there anything else? That, oh, our memory verse. Yes. Memory verse is on the cover of the bulletin. Psalms, we're going to do Psalms 19. You can open your Bible and look at it too to make sure it's correct. In fact, I didn't double check, Miss Lori, because you can make mistakes. I've done, I did that, and the guy, guy uh, corrected me on it. Uh, when I wrote down a verse, he goes, you forgot one word it was like uh or something like that <laughs> you know with an a and i say oh you're right and i corrected it amen so it says the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament showeth his handiwork oh i did find a mistake did you see that anybody else see it miss Lori, you're in trouble <laughs> does anybody see it I'll wait for you guys to find it. Psalms one nine or Psalms nineteen one. Psalms nineteen one. There's a mistake in the, on the bulletin. What did you know? Handiwork is spelled wrong. Yep. Yep. That doesn't. We can't memorize that scripture today. <laughs> <laughs> that's what some people would do i mean <laughs> but we don't it's, it's a, the king james has an i instead of a y and what happened was I, this is probably what happened she probably typed it in there and it did an auto correct on her yeah. so it has an i instead of a y on handy work is it why you guys are wrong Mm -hmm. You guys are wrong. Then you guys got you guys got corrupt King James. There are some corrupt King James. They're they're called they're called uh, they got a name for them. They're King James where they change things. They change have changed things in it. Yeah. Who makes that Bible? Who puts it out? Nelson, uh, Zondervan. No, Nelson or Zondervan. What? In the front, in the front page. Look at where the first title page. It'll tell you. Who's the publisher? This is why it's so important, man. I, you know where I get mine? I get mine uh, from Bearing Precious Seed. It has no notes in it. It doesn't, ha doesn't have all the cross-reference stuff in it. Mine just got the word of God. What? First Word Publisher. Never heard, well, I have heard of them. First Word Publisher. Mm. Is that what that is? Yeah, different bearing precious seed. That's one out of Michigan, right? The mine's from Ohio. It's a church publication. And that has a Y in it. You need to tell them. I'm serious. Tell them, hey, I, I want this change back. Yeah, see. Uh, no, your, is yours, does it say yours says Michigan? Bring in here. Oh, you don't bring it here. I'll come back there and look at it. Hmm. This is local church Bible publication. This is this is this isn't bearing precious seed. See. Mine's bearing precious seed. That's what it looks like. It's, mine says, 
First Word Publishers, Bearing Precious Seed, Ohio, First Baptist Church of Milford, Ohio. This is local church Bible publish publishers. Same one? Yeah. From where I got mine? Yeah. Hers is, hers is the one in it. Bring it here. I know. What is she doing? What is she doing? She said, did she call telling that she wanted the corrupt version? <laughs> That's what they are. The corrupt King James, they call them. Mm -hmm. It is. Wonder if someone else is running it over there. Let me see. Hmm. Someone decided they needed a correct King James, huh? Well, I had a whole list. It was like 102 different uh, verses were wrong in the corrupt King James. But it, but they found more since then. So. Right. And uh, he showed that to him. And then the, there, he left the word out. And I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but yeah. I wondered because he said, oh, I walked in that way, I walked in that way. All together on, on the, to the, to, um, to the, boy, I'm getting worse. <laughs> to the, uh, to the walk. You can get it, Brother Dave. You can get it. Right. They left the word out. Right. You remember, you know what verse it was or what chapter? Yeah, it's Ma Malachi what? Uh, verse ten. Of. Where he talks about. You know, I have really, really been getting worse on this. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Oh, in chapter 3, yeah. verse 10? And they mm. took the word, they took the word, uh, Storehouse out? Yeah, they took that out. They just said, storehouse, not, I mean. Just bringing in the tithes? Yeah. Um, and I oh, you know why he did that. <laughs> my wife went and showed that to Pastor Wood. And he said, well, that is interesting, and that's really all he said. But mm -hmm. Well, see, you got it, John R. Rice wasn't King James only. No, I know he was. And, and, uh, oh, we, you won't believe all the things he changed. Well, you, you, that, this here refers to the, the, the local New Testament church. And it's not the local New Testament church at that time, but the, the local New Testament church to come. And what happens is, is he wasn't a local New Testament church because he was a, a, a sword of the Lord and he wanted your money. Yeah, so, I know you, so I know many ministries have done that but kind I mean, of stuff. They even took a word yeah. Oh, well. Now, he wasn't sure that he knew it, and then another one that he checked it out, and it was all right, but right. I wondered if maybe that was just, but what, the one verse that would be taken out would be that verse. Right. <laughs> hey, well, what do they do with uh, 1 Corinthians 16 one, then? <laughs> hey, uh, Rhonda, check your Psalms uh, 19 one. Yeah, Psalms 19.1. And tell me how handiwork is spelt. What's that? Handiwork. How is it spelt? Psalms 19.1? Oh, no, in Proverbs. Sorry. <laughs> Proverbs starts with a P-R. Psalms is P-S. <laughs>
The Psalms, okay. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his strength. How's handy work spelled? Say you got it wrong too. Mine's it's supposed to be an I. I. Mm-hmm. It's Karen, yours, and Miss uh, and, mine. And, mine. And, and Miss Kim's, and and Miss Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so all the girls have theirs wrong. No wonder the women are rebellious. No wonder. <laughs> oh, I so yeah. Man, I call them and say, hey, how come handiwork's changed? <laughs> then you know what they probably say. Well, it doesn't matter. It still says the same thing. Probably the computer age is probably autocorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Now, handiwork, I'm going to spell it H-A-N-D-I. W-R-K. So, it, wh who makes your Bible? Is yours a local uh, church publication publishers? Oh, nice. Oh, it's Sondervan. <laughs> Sondervan or Nelson. <laughs> Holman? Oh. Yeah, H O L H M A N. Holman. Hmm. Yep. Yep. They usually aren't wrong on that, that I've found, but now I found. Good. I'm not changing it. <laughs> I know I had people come up and they say, well, Wikipedia says, or my encyclopedia says. I don't care what your encyclopedia says or Wikipedia says. Hey, you know what? The, you, you remember all the time? Wait, listen real carefully. Remember all the times I told you Snopes was wrong? That they were lying to us? Do you know they just got busted for propagating things on Snopes, saying it was true and it wasn't? They just arrested the head guy. So and I'm saying, oh, I've been saying for years, don't trust Snopes. But everybody says, oh, Snopes is the answer. Now they got fact check. You can guarantee fact checks of the world, and they're going to be doing the same stuff. Okay? I don't trust those guys. I trust the Bible. Amen. Amen. So if people would get back to just basics and trust the Word of God. Yep. Amen. So we were going to, we memorizing Psalms 19.1. So Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork with an eye. <laughs> Amen. So let's do it again. Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Man, it's like, like you guys are going downhill and got a flat tire or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Making a wide left turn, huh? You know what? I know what Elijah did to me yesterday. I'm turning at that same corner. Yesterday he said, Dad, now don't hit the curb. <laughs> I hit the curb and blew out a tire on my truck. Messed it all up. Had to wait two days for the stinking tire. <laughs> Let's say it again. Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Now say it like you mean it. Here you go, Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. 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 Firmament showeth his handiwork. You guys, you, after, the, after the semicolon, you guys kind of tripped over the semicolon, I think. Got your toes stuck on that little curvy thing. And it says, and then you fell on your face right into the firmament. <laughs> so let's try it one more time. Now say it with... Like you mean it, like this is truth, like you're, pretty, you're, you're quoting the word of God. Amen. Right out of his lips. Hmm? Here we go. Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19.1.
saved. I said, no, I said, you got to get saved before you can be good. See, you can't do anything. You are powerless. Amen. Huh? And then once you get saved, you're going to make mistakes. You will sin. You'll, 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 you'll all of a sudden find yourself mind wandering somewhere it shouldn't be. Or your eyes will look at something you shouldn't look at. And you'll confess it to the Lord and get right with him. And he gives by his power and in his precious blood, he'll cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. These people think that once you're saved, you never sin again. So those people who sin aren't saved. They're crazy. You know what? Because of that action that they just committed, I'd say they sinned. Self-righteousness. Amen. Let's start there. But the thing is, is he's telling us that from the, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, uh, the salvation is the work of God our Father. Okay? It's the work he has, he has uh, uh, ministered to or ministered in. It was his, that was what he ordained. The salvation in Christ. Huh? God's purpose for saving us is basic to our security. Listen to this. He chose us to be holy and without blame. Amen. So if he chooses us to be holy without blame, can you imagine what he's saying? If you, if, if you lose your salvation, oh man, I wasn't strong enough to keep him there. Man, I couldn't make him holy and without blame. Man, I failed them. See, thing is, he never fails us. Right. How many here believe that Christ fails? Raise your hand. Wow. You don't think he fails. You know, there's a lot of people obviously think he does because they think you can lose your salvation. Yeah, amen. Christ fails. He should never fail. We sing about he shall never fail. Amen. Hmm? That's right. uh, he's not a failure. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost, a, he never lost one soul that Christ, God has given him. By the way, read John chapter 17. That's right. It's a good chapter. And, uh, he prays, he prays for the souls that God's given him. Huh? <clears throat> so here he is. His whole purpose, his basic purpose for us, he wants to make us holy and blameless. Amen. By the way, why? Because we're the bride of Christ. By the way, I'm hearing a doctor coming out now that the church isn't the bride of Christ. The Israel is the bride of Christ. And the church is, uh, is something else. I can't remember what they said. It was so far out there. I'm just, and by the way, most of this doctrine I give you come from women. I'm not joking. Exactly. And I'm sitting there going, what is going on? It's like the spirit of Jezebel has risen up. Right. Hmm? What do you think Jezebel was preaching in her days? <laughs> she obviously was preaching against Elijah <laughs> and the truth that he was presenting. And she, was, she, she didn't like him, wanted him dead, and, and would block him on Facebook if they were alive today. <laughs> Huh? He would be on there. He would be on there saying, oh, a woman says, uh, they're going to fling you down. Block, block, block. <laughs> huh? Could you imagine if Facebook was around in those days? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Look over in uh, Hebrews chapter 2. <laughs> yeah, someone's probably looking for the book of hate Facebook in here. <laughs> Where's the book of Facebook in the Bible? <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. By the way, I kind of wonder if that's not what people think. They think Facebook is the word of God. They think it's church. They think social media is a place for church. Now, there's people sitting on Facebook right now and on social media not in church. Huh? What are they doing? They're replacing the church that God's ordained with Facebook? Hmm? Social media? Twitter? Huh? Flickr? Whatever else they got out there? Gossiper. Gossiper, yeah. I mean, where, yeah, they ought to have one called Gossiper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, listen what it says. It says this, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Huh? He was his whole his basic purpose is to bring us bring us with a, a holiness without blame Amen. and into glory. Now look at God's not going to fail his mission. Great. Now listen. I was going I was going down this 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 uh, this pathway. The thing is is the, the the church is the bride of Christ and in Ephesians he says it's going to be without spot or wrinkle. Hmm? It's going to be blameless. Right. 
It's going to be blameless. And if the bride's going to be blameless, he's going to present him to his father. All of heaven's going to glory in the fact the church is there. Amen. Hmm? I like what one guy said today, because all these people are saying, now there's no tribulation in the Bible, there's no rapture in the Bible, or rapture's after the tribulation, uh, Steve Anderson and blah, 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 down here in Tempe. But these guys, yeah, they're going to find out. They're going to get to go through tribulation, because they're probably not saved. Yeah. <laughs> huh? And guess what? And the church will be blameless. The church will be uh, without the spot or wrinkle. It will be holy. Hey, it will be in glory. Why? Because God knows how to keep what is his. And he's not going to reject his children. It's just like your children. If your child goes and, and uh, kills somebody, let's say, kills somebody, and they get put in prison, yet yeah, still your child. It doesn't change the fact that's your child. And if a man gets saved, born again, and he follows the Lord, and he sins against God, guess Guess what? That doesn't change the fact he's a child. Just like your children sin against you. Amen. Huh? Amen. And I'm going to tell you, you don't, you don't lose your salvation because you make a mistake. Right. Because my mistakes, whether I do them or don't do them, doesn't keep me saved. It's Christ who saves me. Amen. Huh? It's his blood, not my blood. Amen. <laughs> See, if one son that he has, by the way, let's read that real carefully. He says, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory. Now look at this. If they're sons and we're children of God, he's not going to lose one of his sons. He isn't. Why would he call them sons then? Right. Think about it. What does he call them sons and then he calls them bastards afterwards? You say, whoo, that's what he calls them in the Bible. You know what a bastard is? It's someone who's not a son of God. They're illegitimate. They don't belong in the family of God. It doesn't change. Look at a woman who has a child out of wedlock doesn't all of a sudden call him a, a legitimate child. <laughs> I know this world's trying to do that, but I mean, but, but it's still the child is illegitimate. That's all that word means. See? They're illegitimate. That doesn't make, that doesn't make them a legitimate child. Where's the father? Hmm? Some of you guys are saying, you must be nuts this morning, preacher. I am nuts this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's look over in the book of John. This is one of my favorite portions of scripture talking about the eternal salvation in John chapter 10. It's a, it's a great, I've used as a, I've seen people's eyes open up and you can see their soul realize what the truth is here right. look at verse 29 we'll start there i'll be coming back here so you might want to keep your finger in there but he says as my father which gave them me what did it just say which gave them me <laughs> huh <laughs> is greater than all and no man's able to pluck them out of my father's hand Amen. who is more powerful than God. And God gave them Jesus Christ. That's what he just said. Hmm? And guess what? You can't lose it. It's a security. That is a secure statement. I am secure in Jesus Christ because, look, at I got saved. I was told today I was lost. <laughs> that I was still in the womb. Need to be born again. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I got saved 36 years ago. Huh? And so I'm like, no, I'm not. Look at, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I was if I was lost still. It would have been a long time ago I'd gone back to what I was doing before. No, it's the Lord and the Holy Spirit of God that uh, drives me to do what I do, Amen. and to keep doing what, the right and trying to do what's right. <laughs> if they, if this is, if this verse, if this verse is to be defeated, if the man who's got Christ is to be plucked out of God's hand, there'd have to be one stronger than God. Hmm? Yeah, amen. There isn't one stronger. Satan doesn't even have the strength. He has no power unless God gives it to him. Amen. You have no power unless God gives it to you. Right. And you don't have power in your sinful nature to draw yourself out of the hand of the Lord. This is for sure. You're saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You're saved. Born again. Amen. Let me show you something in John chapter 3. Oh, this is one of your favorite verses. John chapter 3, verse 16. It's a football. NFL's favorite verse too, I bet. 
<laughs> used to be in the end zones. <laughs> John chapter 3, verse 16. Look, we know what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, here he promises a security. Now listen. Let's read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. Amen. He didn't say whosoever believeth in him and, and stay right all the time or never sins after he gets saved or after he gets Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish. Let's read that. Should not. Let's say it together. Should not perish. Say it again. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That should not means should not. <laughs> uh, that's a promise from God. Huh? So he promises us negatively we will not perish. But he promises positively that we shall have everlasting life. Hmm? So you won't be condemned, but you'll have eternal life. I knew a preacher who preached 500 messages from that verse. <laughs> huh? You want to know why there's so much in there of security towards the believer? That's right. These people are nuts who say you can't. You can't be saved. It's once saved, always saved. You know, I, I think of, I think of uh, what uh, Jason told me, Jason Payton. He told me uh, one time, he says, down at the mission, he said he was down there and some guy was preaching. And uh, they were making fun of once saved, always saved people. People who believe that you're saved, once you're saved, you're always saved. And so he says, yeah, that's like once shaved, always shaved. I said, that is, that is not the same. <laughs> Look at my face is not saved by the face of God or by the blood of Jesus. I mean, I'm talking about my hair doesn't stop growing because I'm saved. <laughs> that's not. I said, that guy's a nut because it rhymes. I said, no. I said, he didn't even go to Scripture to prove that those guys who say once saved, always saved. He didn't go to Scripture to prove against it. That's what he used as his doctrinal proof. There's a bunch of wolves out there, I'm telling you. And that was preaching in the rescue mission here, Phoenix Rescue Mission here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. You said you shouldn't say that. I did say it. I just did say it. <laughs> Amen. Because they're a bunch of heretics. Heretics, that's all they let into those places anymore. Hmm? The love of God... Think about it, because he said, for God so loved the world, the love of God guarantees your security. Amen. Amen. You say, think God all of a sudden just doesn't love you? You say, well, I fell out of love with my wife or my husband, or I fell out of love with the, the church. And, but God never falls out of love. Because his love is pure. Amen. And so your, his love will keep you. Yes. It makes you secure. Amen. <laughs> That doesn't mean go out and sin. That's, what, that's where everybody has a problem. Because you're secure in Jesus Christ, you can go out and sin now and you go, you go to heaven. No, because you got the Holy Spirit of God that lives in you and he directs you and guides you and teaches you, convicts you, hey, and shows you the direction you should go. And because he's in there and because you're saved and you're communed with the Holy Spirit of God, now you want to do what's right. I don't go around saying, I can't wait to sin. Now I'm saved. <laughs> No, that's what a lost man would do who's faking to be saved. <laughs> yeah. So God, God has, God has, the, he dealt with the, the salvation. He's the one who planned it. But here the father planned salvation through Jesus Christ who he provided. Look over in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. It's like I'm, I'm bringing up some, some very common verses that you should know. I use this. We witness into somebody. He uses this all the time. Amen. Look at verse 5, 8. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for it. Well, look at He knew we were sinners. Amen. Amen. I tell people when I witness to him, I say, look at that. He already knows you're a sinner. Look at you can't get good to get God. <laughs> I say, there's no way. You're a sinner. And because you're a sinner, he died for you. And what did he show to you even though you were a sinner? His love. Huh? He commended his love toward us. In that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even though he knew our sinful state, he still died for us. Look, at that's why he looked at when he was on the cross. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Why do you have to say that? Because they're sinning. <laughs> they're sinners. And as he was dying for them, he didn't say, I'm dying for perfect people. In fact, he said he came to die for the sick, not the well. Hmm? 
You know what? He became author of eternal salvation because he suffered and died for sinners. He didn't, not, he didn't suffer and die for the well, the unsick, the people who didn't sin. The Pharisees thought they didn't sin, uh, even though he proved that they did, and they got in conviction and said, let's stone him. <laughs> hmm. hey, how do you teach us? Yeah, who are you? Are you teaching us? Oh, yeah. You, uh, you're looking in the face of God teaching you. Amen. Wouldn't it be great if God, you looked in the face of God and he was teaching you personally? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so that makes him that makes him the author of eternal salvation why because he suffered and died for sinners hmm. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and hath well let's let's uh, let's back up a little bit and uh, get it here uh, let's see here even when we were dead, in verse 5, in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Huh? You say, what? Well, he's, he ain't promising this to you if you're staying perfect and without sin. Paul's talking, Paul's talking about the people who have trusted Christ, the church. You trusted Christ? Yeah, you're going to sit in heavenly places. That's how God, God views you already. Amen. He already sees you sitting in heavenly places. Look, he's not erasing your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Huh? Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Huh? God sees us already resurrected in Christ. Hmm. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 25. We got to realize, that, and when people come across and, and they'll t they, they, they have such heresy they're teaching, like that lady today that I come across, and, and just such heresy she was teaching. The heresy she was teaching was there isn't going to be two real witnesses in the end times. The church and the Jews are the real witnesses. That they're, that they're, it's, actually, it's not people, it's actually groups. I said, well, show me in the Bible where it says that. Well, then she started attacking me because <laughs> I, how dare you ask her, ask me in the Bible where it come from? Because it was a revelation that came to my mind. <laughs> I said, really? I said, but it doesn't coincide with the word of God. So it's not a revelation from God. I said, it's of another spirit. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> it went downhill from there. Amen. You know what? It's been a long time since I got in an a, a argument. I guess it would be a contention like that. I, I said I was contending for the faith. She goes, your faith? <laughs> I said, amen. Praise the Lord. It is my faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. I don't know what your faith is. Huh? But the thing is, I felt good about it. <laughs> you said, why? Because, man, I was able to stand and the Lord was able to give me what I needed to say. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Did I tell you that already? Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again, talking about Jesus Christ, and raised again for our justification? Is his resurrection important? Yes. Oh, yeah. Huh? He raised, he, God raised him up for our justification, it says. Amen. Yeah, look at, <clears throat> do you know what justification means? Yeah, what he's doing, and by the way, uh, he, he, what he's doing is he, he puts in, he sees you as just as, yeah, like you said, just as you never sinned. You look at it as, I am justified in the eyes of God. By why? Amen. But what, did it say because I was good? Because I wasn't a sinner? Because I, I'm not going to sin after this? No, because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen. Huh? So, yeah. So, we're justified. Why would God destroy uh, his justified people in hell? Why would they be lost now all of a sudden? Because they've made a mistake. Because they sinned. Hmm? Did not God know that we were sinners that he was saving? Huh? Look over in Hebrews chapter 9. By the way, I just showed you the resurrection. I showed you the death now. I showed you the resurrection. Now I'm going to show you the, the ascension. What's the purpose of it? Huh? John 9, 24. Or Hebrews 9, 24, I'm sorry. It says, for Christ has not entered into the holy places he made with hands, which are the fingers, figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Huh? 
He's want to know what he did? What, what did he do when he get to heaven? What, what does Hebrews tell us? Says he become our advocate. Yes, Amen. So he goes up there. He's become our advocate. Now he stands between God and man, and he and he pleads our cause. Yeah. Huh? Look at if the greatest lawyer that's ever lived on the face of the earth was Jesus Christ, Amen. the greatest advocate for any man. Amen. There's no lawyers that's ever been to Harvard that could outdo Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ would turn them dizzy, amen? They would, he would have the law, so t they, they would be so twisted in their minds when he got, presented the law and had it in order, they wouldn't know what to do. He would, he, he would win every case if he was a lawyer on the face of this earth, but he wins every case in heaven before his father. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? He's your advocate. Yes. <laughs> Why? He ascended to be your advocate. Amen. Look over in John, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. Now, why does he have to tell us that? Now, he's talking about his children. You are his children. You want to know why he has to tell us that? Because you still have that stinking sinful nature. Yes, sir, amen. Like the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, and if any man sin, ooh, look at that. <laughs> that means you can actually sin as a saved person. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. <laughs> he hasn't stopped advocating for us. He hasn't stopped pleading our cause. It isn't all of a sudden, well, they're saved. We're going to quit pleading for them. <clears throat> God still stands there for us. Jesus Christ does before the Father. Can you imagine that? The tears that might come to his eyes. Saying, Lord, please, Lord. You've seen the blood on them. You know what I've done. I was buried, I died, was buried, and rose again three days Amen. later. My blood is on the mercy seat. Lord, will you forgive them of their sin? Amen. He's pleading for the Father. You know what? Why do he come? So that we can reconcile with the Father. Amen. God, was a, God was wrathful Amen. with man. He, he showed his wrath in the days when uh, the flood came right. against man. Jesus Christ is standing in that gap so that won't happen again. I believe that's why God says he won't destroy the earth again with the flood. Hmm? Jesus Christ stands there and says, Lord, don't, don't destroy him. It's like Moses pleading for Israel in the mount. Lord, don't destroy him. Well, I'm destroying them all. We'll start all over with you, Moses. No, oh, don't destroy him. He pled for Israel, and God gave him stay of execution. Amen. Amen. Hmm? And Jesus Christ. Remember what I said what Moses was? Does anybody remember what I said Moses was in the Old Testament? He was the mediator. He was the, he was the prophet, the priest, and the king. You know, I taught that to some people here. They said, we didn't know that Moses was a king. The Bible says he was the king of Jeshua. Huh? That's what God said. Someone said, well, was he anointed? I said, God said he was king. How much more anointed can you get? And so he is prophet, priest, and king. He's a picture of Christ. And Christ is the prophet, priest, and king. Huh? And he's a mediator of the New Testament. He's an advocate between God and man. Amen. What a blessing that we have a man named Jesus, God in the flesh, deity, that stands in the gap for us. Guess what? Why would he stand there if there wasn't a need? There's a need. Amen. So these people say, well, you lose your salvation because you committed a sin. You're saying Jesus Christ isn't standing in the gap? Hmm? He isn't pleading for my cause. Hmm. Now, hopefully this is getting through to you. Amen. John chapter 10 again. I told you to keep your finger in there. You should be able to flip right over to it. John chapter 10. I told you this was one of my favorite verses, uh, our chapters that talk about eternal security. Verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Now, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Now, what does that make the... the, the what does that make Christ then? The shepherd. He's got sheep. <laughs> huh? That's, that's, that's the conclusion you can come to. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Huh? Christ working as a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But the, the Christ working as a shepherd guarantees your security. Because he's your shepherd. 
Huh? Sheep go astray sometimes. I remember dragging sheep through the fence. <laughs> oh, seriously, grab them by the hind legs because they wouldn't go into the pasture you told them to go into. Huh? And you grab them by the hind legs. And by the way, when you get, it, so you get a sheep down, and most sheep are this way, when you get a sheep down, he submits. When you get him under, when, you, when the shepherd grabs hold of him, he submits. I mean, we're talking physically and grabbing hold of him. And sometimes, uh, 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 well, well, hopefully as a sheep in this congregation here, when the shepherd gets hold of you, hopefully you submit to him. Amen. And let him do in your life as he will. Amen. But he secures you because he's the shepherd. Amen. What do you think the rod and staff's all about? I had one guy saying, no, you talk to your children, you don't spank them with a rod. I said, then the Bible says if you, if you, if you uh, hate your son, you spare the rod. That's right. And I said, ah, Bible, if you love them, you chase them at times, amen? amen. <laughs> That's what you do. Amen. And I said, God has a rod and a staff. And I heard one preacher say, well, that rod and staff, they're both comforting, as in the rod. He doesn't, that doesn't mean you spank them. It just means it's there, it's, you know, to keep him in line, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, he's just looking at it. <laughs> no, God uses it. A shepherd amen. will take it and swat that, that sheep on the rear end amen. and move him along. Amen. Huh? The staff is to protect him. It comforts him. He grabs him with that hook of that, that staff, and he grabs him, get him out of danger. Yep. Huh? Help direct him. Amen. Yeah, these people are nuts, man. I get, my, my head's full of uh, acorns because of them. Amen? <laughs> so many nuts in there. Amen. Well, I want to finish this up. We'll do it real quick. The Holy Spirit is active in our salvation. Amen. Hmm? His indwelling is a basis for our security. You have to look at if you are saved, you know the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. That's true. Huh? Yeah. Our bodies are his temple and his residence is permanent. Amen. Hmm? We'll go on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's permanent residence. Amen. God, he doesn't move out. He doesn't say that this is a dilapidated residence. <laughs> I'm moving out. No, he moved in. It's a permanent residence. He plans on staying. Amen. Hmm? We put God on, on man's level. We think, like, we think God thinks like us when we should be thinking like him. <laughs> and we don't think like him. We're supposed to put on the mind of Christ, and many people don't. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Amen. See, you're saved. You got the same spirit. And that same spirit that dwells in you dwells in the man, every man that's saved. Man, woman, and child. huh? So the, this baptism of the Holy Spirit we see here makes us secure in him. Amen. Hmm? Can you imagine that? We, we, we show our, our faith in the Lord. We show our faith. It's just a demonstration publicly by being baptized. And we get baptized because we're saying we, we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in him. Do you know what? You don't ever go back and say, I got unbaptized. <laughs> I don't remember ever getting baptized. I sinned. I must get baptized again. Never do that. How come we don't do that with the water? No, but we always do it with the spirit. What are we nuts? That water is just a symbol. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit of God is God in the flesh dwelling within you. He's not going to be corrupt like that. Amen. Huh? He places us permanently in the body of Christ. Amen. <laughs> what do you think? God's, God's, well, you know, 10 years from now, he's going to sin. And we're going to have to let him go. <laughs> That's the way we think God thinks. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll finish up with this. This is one of my favorite when it comes to realizing. And, and I'll tell you the story behind it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, which if people will listen, they, they'll understand. I like, I like look, looking at laws, laws of men, and seeing where man got the laws and how God shows us through salvation the law that man got. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, And in whom also trusted, after ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, now talking about Jesus Christ, you believed in him, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption, look at that, 
That means you're sealed until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. That means you cannot lose this, this Holy Spirit seal on you until the redemption comes and you're facing Christ himself. Amen. Now, let me put it this way. Huh. God has his mark on you. We're his and he's ours. This store, this passage here goes along with what they used to do in the days when they would send letters or messages to other people. The king would come and he'd say, I got a message I want you to send to another king. And he would address it to that king and he put a seal on the back of it, a wax seal, and he used his, his signet ring, which would have, have his, maybe his coat of arms or something on it, and he put it in the wax to show it this is truly from this king. And it would be sent. And that messenger, if he took that message and that seal got broken, that messenger could be killed for breaking that seal because it wasn't his right to break the seal. So the only one who had the right to break the seal is whoever the letter was addressed to. And so that other king would get it and he goes, oh, it's got my name on it. He breaks the seal and he reads the letter. That's the same thing with the seal of the Holy Ghost. That seal cannot be broken except by one. That's Christ who it's addressed to. And when we go before him, he's our redeemer. It goes before the redeemer. So you are saved from now to everlasting. Amen. You can't lose it. Amen. Huh? Why? The Holy Spirit of God says so. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. You're sealed on the day of redemption. That's what it teaches us. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? you can't lose it. Someone go around saying you're lost now because you're sin. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit still hasn't released that seal to Christ. I mean, Christ hasn't broke that seal. I'm sorry. He saved me. He didn't lose me. <laughs> uh, hey, I may have sinned and it's wrong, but I have to get right. But I'm saved from, from, from here to the uttermost. Amen. Amen. So I'm just telling you, that's a, that's, a great, that's a great understanding of the sealing of the Holy Ghost. And uh, you know what? I hope that you got uh, what uh, we have eternal security. All that gives you eternal security. Uh, and uh, that, that's one of my favorite portions of Scripture, man, to, to read, to Amen. see that I'm sealed under the day of redemption. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Help us to understand, Lord, what we heard. Lord bless this church service to come in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All righty, church